The Kislow custom client is provided by Genexus and can be imported into the knowledge base to use or modify as a part of our project. It contains all the web panels and procedures needed to implement many functionality of Hexiflow standard client that we have seen in previous part of this course. Using the Hexiflow custom client, you can log into Hexiflow, execute the user inbox, see the out of tray, administrator process definitions, work items, instances, and even monitor the execution. If you look at the source code programmed in these web panels, we can see how they use the workflow APIs to connect the workflow engine and get the information needed in each case, execute different functions to each object, etc. In this video, we are going to see some of the panels from the custom client to understand its code and how they can be modified. You can modify the custom client for several reasons. For example, we can add or hide information, integrate the custom client to our web panels, add, ac add actions at different parts to include some code. All the UX of these web panels can be modified and adjusted to our project. We use custom client to integrate the client of Hexiflow into our project. As a part of our project, without the user interface of Hexiflow and using our own user interface if we want to see more information about custom client, we can follow this link. The custom client contains a few folders, desktop folder, the process manager folder, document manager folder, even viewer folder, and the management console. The custom client desktop folder, it has the inbox, the outbox, the process, my processes and my documents. They provide the same information and actions as the standard client. The process manager folder contains the pages, the tasks, and the process definitions that are the more used pages from the man process manager section. The document manager folder contains the document administration page, the same as the standard client. The event viewer folder contains the event manager page, the same as the standard client and the manager console contains the user administration, the role administration, the organizational unit definition, and the organizational unit pages, the same as the custom client. The statistics, backend, server settings, and license manager are not implemented in the custom client example. The main use of the custom client is incorporate Higgins flow pages to our project using the same UX. For example, this page presents an inbox customized with the look and feel and behavior that match the rest of our application. The user of our application will not feel the difference from other parts of our application. To incorporate this to our knowledge base, we have to import an XPZ file that's provided within the Genexus installation. Before importing, check that the at least one fold, one business process diagram has been created in the knowledge base. This is necessary to make sure that the model has the workflow data types. Otherwise, it will be an error during the compilation of the project. When we are importing this file to our knowledge base, we can see all the web panels, procedure, and structured data type that's going to be incorporated to knowledge base. And it's going to be at a folder, client folder, inside the workflow folder of our Knowledge Base Explorer. After we import the workflow custom client into our Knowledge Base, we are going to find the workflow client folder. Inside this folder, all the web panels import. If we run the main object, the workflow client, we can see this workflow custom client and execution. First, we have to sign in, so I want to write the workflow user. And then it's password. After I sign in, I'm here at the workflow client main object. I will click the inbox link to go to the workflow inbox page. Then here I all the filters, the actions, and the grid with all the work items I have to execute and complete. I will start a new project selecting purchases process and then the menu button. Here it 
creates the work it and the first work is of the process. Now I will execute this work item. This asks me to complete uh, to upload a document. So I will create a new document called doc of the type and will select it from my file system. After I select my 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 file, I have confirmed and that will be uploaded here. After I complete this task, I press the button complete to create the next work items in the process definition. I can see, for example, the history of a process that shows me all the work items that have been completed, created. The main object of the Workflow Custom Client is a web panel called Workflow Client, as we have seen during the execution. If we click the link inbox, it's going to appear in the right part of the web panel in the Workflow Inbox code. This page, the Workflow Client, has three parts. The first, the header, which is taken from the master page of the web panel. Then, a tree menu of, with all the functions that are provided by the custom client. You can click on those web panels, uh, links, and it will show the selected page at the right part of the panel. In this case, I have selected the inbox and it's going to show the workflow inbox web panel. The workflow inbox has the workflow filters, the function, the, all, uh, the first uh, element is a workflow filter, then it has a table with all the actions that can be executed from the grid, execute, complete, history, preview, delegate, then it has a combo box, which has all the processes that the user logged in can start. After that, it has a grid with all the work items that belongs to the workflow inbox of this user. And uh, after that, it has a web component with the control of page in this grid. If we see the code of this panel, the first event is the event start. Here, it's going, the, the web panel will validate the session of, this, of, the, of the, the user session. Every object of the custom client checks if there's a valid session and to do so it uses a procedure called workflow check server session well here we have two variables the server variable which is of the workflow server data type the user variable which is of the workflow user data type first it's going to load the workflow server variable from the web session using the workflow check server session procedure we're going to see in the next part of the course after that that if it has the workflow server loaded it will obtain the connected user from the workflow server and then it will initialize the web page in this case we are initializing the workflow inbox so it's going to load all the creative process the combo box that we have seen ex during execution. First, it clears the components at the first item, the select element, and then use the lo user logged in obtained in previously in the event start, and it used the, the method list creatable process definition. This method obtains all the process definitions that a user logged in can create and start. We are going to filter this method, it has a filter parameter, but in this case we are leaving this filter empty. This variable filter is from the workflow filter data type. After that, the process definition, which is a list of process definition, it's not empty, we are going to iterate this list and load all the process definition ID and name to the combo box. After we load the combo box, we are going to create two work components. First, with the workflow filter, which use the workflow filter work component, and the workflow patient. 
after we finish the start event we are going to see the workflow check server session procedure these procedures get the session handler id from the web session and load this connection into the workflow server variable it was previously saved this session during the login into the web, web session of the if there's no there's an error during this loading session the program will redirect to the workflow sign in and after the loading the session the connected user is the connect is connected to the workflow server variable The next method at the workflow inbox is the refresh event. This executes a subroutine called load filters that will bring all the filters from the web session that were previously saved in the workflow filter web component. So it loads at the workflow filter variable all the workflow filter that was were saved at the web session. After that, we'll obtain from the web session also the actual page of the workflow inbox the filters are in a web component called workflow filter and it saves the filters SDT into the web session if we see this web panel workflow filter it looks like this it has a priority state subject processes activity name user and have stop two main subroutines. The first is the one it executes when it's loading, that it loads all the filters, workflow data type from the web session that was previously saved, and it loads all the data into the variables of the panel. In case that this workflow filter is executed from an outbox, it loads the today variable into the ended from <coughs> variable and the ended to variable it's, it's working it's it's called from the my process or process task document my document and event it loads the today variable into the create from for default values after the user completes the information and clicks the apply button it will execute an event we call a save files or subroutine and this subroutine will save all the information loaded by the user in the variables and by the user in the variables to the filter data type SDT. after it loads all the information in the filter, filter variable it will load that information into the web session in order to have it available for the workflow inbox After you load the filters in the refresh event, it would use the user variable previously loaded at the start event with the method get word list order by. This method gets the word list of the user, which is the list a list of work items that are needed to be completed by this user. This method can be filtered with be filtered with information that was entered in the workflow filter web component and also it has another parameter which is the order that we are going to see the information in this case we're going to order with the workflow domain and will be defined that is going to be the order with the created by created date descended this will bring us return us a list of workflow work items we are going to load this list into the workflow work items variable in the preload event we are going to iterate this list and for each element of this list we are going to load the information of that work item into the variables of the grid and then we are going to execute the grid load method